Hello everyone, I'm Brahm Mithra. Welcome back. It is settlement phase. Uh, this settlement phase really starts uh, the turn towards new stuff that makes it different than season one. I know, you know, the Twilight Night campaign variant does do it, but you know, I'm fighting gorms, fighting antelopes. The stuff's been, I, I did that a lot in season one too. Uh, I know we added Slenderman, but we haven't fought him yet, so but this settlement event is going to start doing, like, actual new stuff, which will be neat. <laughs> I know we're going to fight the antelope one more time, but that's it. Hopefully, if I can get some pelt. Uh, I know there was comments about, yeah, I, I, I'm having trouble getting pelt. But then it's not the end of the world that I can't get a lot of pelt, right? Um, think back to last episode, I showed the odds of everything. It's not really that bad of luck like it's like a what it went from like a 25 percent chance to like a 37 and i still didn't get it but that's not like amazingly bad luck but i did think it was interesting the shield like that was astoundingly bad luck on the getting to even hit which is a knuckle shield but because it doesn't really have that much of an effect on the fight you don't really consider it bad luck and i'm sure that that was that the odds of me missing as many times as I did with the shield was probably minuscule in comparison to me just drawing Symposium. Even though I put Symposium on the good luck thing, which it is, I'm glad that I finally drew Symposium, the odds don't nearly reach the abysmal percentages that of hitting with that shield was. So, um, and I understand that I, I might have been off on some of the percentages. I'm not the best with percentages and cal calculating perceived... I'm, Perceived percentage is actual percentage. So I did the actual percentages. That's why I said this is the percentage of this current moment, or this is the percentage in this moment. Not this is what I. Sh this is the perceived percentage. This is what the expected percentage. I did, I'm not the best at doing those calculations, but so that might have been flawed. But those were rough estimates, rough rough guesses, and I'm sure they weren't that bad if they were off. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. First things first, before we get into the settlement phase and before all this goes, I just want to talk about how just absolutely amazing it is that I get to enjoy this game with this, with m multiple people, like hundreds of people. My videos get views of like a hundred people. I don't know if they're all, might be people watching multiple times because they can't watch it. I, granted, episodes are long, but that's because I don't like to do cuts. So, I know my episodes are always long, so maybe people had multiple viewings to get them all in, or maybe people don't watch them all, they skip to what they want. However that is, uh, it, it's amazing, regardless. And I had a comment, first of all, multiple comments. <laughs> if you, person comments every video and helping me amazingly. Um, but first, th this one comment just blew my mind, right? I don't, I don't consider myself a bad KDM player, right? I, I'm not... I'm not the best there is. I'm probably, I, I know I make stupid mistakes. I can't remember everything. And I'm not, I'm not talking mistakes, rules mistakes. I do make rules mistakes too, but I mean like positioning mistakes, not putting, not attacking at the right moment, not using the, those kind of mistakes, like mistakes that I'm in control of. Rules mistakes are, I misread this or I forgot, right? That, that's not something, that's an honest mistake. The other, I'm talking mistakes that I make because I'm not the best, <laughs> right? But, the approach that I took to the butcher fight, right? So the butcher fight, there was a comment that that said a whole thing. I never even thought about looking at it, right? Now, I have a bad perceived notion of how to handle fights, right? It's not, it's just a different viewpoint. It's not a bad way of handling it. I view it as from like a video game perspective or something, you know, because I've played lots of MMOs in my days, so, or lots of RPGs or strategy games where you want to control the fight by manipulating the monster in a way to make it so you're controlling where the damage goes, right? You have a tank, essentially. So the Butcher fight, I did that, right? So whenever I fight the Butcher, I always set up the starting survivor, the survivor starting positions, you know, where I can make it most advantageous to me so I can control the pace of the fight to make the tank get attacked. The person who I want to get attacked I'm going to get this butcher to come right to him, attack him, and then I'm going to deal with the butcher and move around in a way like that, right? But the other way you could have handled it, because I go first, 
and a nemesis encounter and i can you know like like the screaming elf where you can you can do on any side you get the whole side of the board where you want to set up the uh, nemesis you get the whole front of the board not always but mostly you get the whole front line or you get a whole board's edge where you can set up for a nemesis encounter so i could have started way on the sides right and then because i go first i could have just headbanded looked at the two cards that he would draw, because the Butcher is going to draw two cards always, you know, different with three sometimes for higher level ones, but, you know, for the, for the most part, Butcher level one. Since I go first, I could headband right away, look at what he's going to do, and then position myself and not even get hit, right? Because it's just, the Butcher just doesn't have enough movement if I were to set myself up in the corners. And that's just an approach I never even thought of, right? It's not that the approach I use is not is, is, a, is a typical approach, right? It's, a, it's an approach you would want to use for a normal monster, a normal setup. You, you, need to, you need to manipulate the monster in a way that it's always targeting a specific person. But just the, the, the thought that you could set up in such a way that you could just avoid the entire first round, I just had never thought about it, right? It's actually one of the things I, I dislike about Lion God because there is just a chance that because, you know, quarries go first, Unless you amber or whatever, but there's just a chance you could just get wiped out because there's almost no way to hide from one of the Lion Gods. So I, I know I mentioned that last season, but that was amazing. And for that, I'm just thankful that so many people comment and I have all this. It's just so, it's so cool. So thank you so much for everybody who watches. I do encourage everybody to comment just from things like that. Um, I, 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 I encourage everyone to comment. I try to respond to everything and that was just so awesome that that happened. And I'm just glad that I got to share that point of view of one way of handling the Butcher or any nemesis, really, if you ever get the opportunity to set up an entire board edge. It just reframed my way of thinking, which is just awesome. Um, now we'll get into the actual settlement, kind of. Uh, so we've got some things to also correct. <laughs> uh, as was said, look, getting small amounts by is not the end of the world, right? And I do get a lot of bone. However, I made a mistake on the not on the Gorm fight, right? Uh, I accidentally drew six Gorm resources just because I was in a rush, I guess. Just you know, just trying to get the episodes, you know, if they're not super long, you know, so I keep a fast pace. I accidentally did the level, the two reward instead of the one reward, so uh, I drew too too many resources. So luckily, I can still fix that because I have because they weren't, you know, the stout hides and stuff. They're just bones, so they're just sitting around in my storage anyway. So I had stout vertebrate, which I could just erase two of them. So there, two Gorm resources. That's I'm lucky I was able to fix it because I didn't draw what I needed and I have all these bones just laying around all the time. So yeah, luckily that happened. And then two, again, hastily mistake that I made. So uh, for Alice, when she hit her um, age one, I accidentally looked, because then, how I do it, I just have a cheat sheet here. Can't see it because of the, the lights. But anyway, they're just a cheat sheet, oh, cheat sheets. Ah. <laughs> anyway, I, I just, I printed out every table that you use, right? I've, this has got the intimacy, bold, insight, you know, overwhelming darkness, age, intimacy. Everything's on here, so, I need, so you don't have to keep looking up in the book. And I just accidentally went to H2 instead of H1. So Aelis, with that role, should have got herself a fighting art. So we're going to do that um, prior to also aging up Yisa. Because Yisa needs to age up just in general from the last hunt. So what we're going to do is first we're going to give Aelis a random fighting art. Now I need to do that because, getting back to what I was saying, we're actually doing new stuff. I've got a whole bunch of Sun Soccer stuff to add, uh, Fighting Arts and Disorders. So I got to draw for A-List before those are added to the deck. And then also for Yisa because they're not going to get added to the deck. Now I know you can add these things. You can play any campaign with any Fighting Arts. You can do whatever you want, right? That's just how I choose to do it. Unless I'm actually going to use the monster, I don't want to include all of their stuff. Um, so let's get into the settlement phase. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead, age up, uh, or draw this fighting art for, uh, draw this fighting art here for Alice. 
Uh, she's going to lose one strength from this because that's what I accidentally did. Age two would give plus one strength. So we're going to fix that and give Alice a random fighting art now. So we'll see what she gets. She's fist and tooth, so Monster Claw would be helpful. Uh, orator of Death, that's not super great. So she's now an Orator of Death, which is not bad. Um, so, what is Orator of Death, isn't it? Yeah, plus two insanity. Oh, you can encourage when you die. So, and yeah, spend an action to give everybody two insanity. So Orator of Death. Okay, so there's Orator of Death. Goes back in the fighting art thing now. Now, there's fighting arts, done, shuffled. Uh, Alice now, Orator of Death. She goes down to two strength. All right, put her over there, because I'll probably need her again. Uh, now Yisa, who actually is age two. Let's go ahead and age two for her. Uh, 11. She gets the actual plus one strength. <laughs> okay, so she gets the actual plus one strength for Yisa now. So she's at four strength. All right. Cool, cool. Now, Gorm Climate. <laughs> All right, here we go. Gorm Climate. Well, I guess now this is the actual start of the settlement phase. <laughs> Okay, so now Gorm Climate. Here we go. Let's go ahead and we will roll, see what we get. Uh, 10. Uh, storytelling, no. We don't have storytelling. Uh, so what is this? Uh, the settlement struggles against the quaking ground. Linking arms brace themselves against the storm. Nominated survivor with zero hunt experience. They draw from the settlement's... Termination and gain plus one courage. Okay, Gorm Climate now goes back on the top there. I'm going to shuffle that up. First, look for someone with zero. Oh, we've got Jack, Jill. None of these people are going to trigger. Um, I guess we'll give it to Atrium. Plus one courage. He's got zero hunt experience. Cool. So Atrium can go over there. All right. Now, settlement, actual settlement event before we get into the other stuff. So, um, so what I was talking about. Now that I'm actually adding Sunstalker, I need. I still want to finish a um, Screaming Antelope set, but you know, I'm. I've been looking at some other stuff. <laughs> Which is why I was saying that we're going to actually start getting to other things. I'm going to make a gear set that we did not use at all in Season 1. Obviously, also, the, um, you know, with going, try to getting, you know, uh, Sun Soccer stuff. So, obviously, that's obvious stuff we didn't use in Season 1. But, um, and the tenth, the pattern cards and stuff. But, all right, let's see. What do we roll down? Uh, six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six card. Nickname. Uh, so, nickname. I don't think I need to leave that, that thing up there the whole time. Every returning survivor gets a nickname. They roll 1d10 on all three tables, add nickname to the survivor's current nickname. Okay, so this is just a table with a lot of nicknames. I'm not going to leave that up there because I'm just going to try to do this quick. <laughs> uh, basically, you can try. You can get a plus one or a minus one to, on the ones and tens. That's it. Everything else is just moot. Um, coincidentally, nickname is actually a really cool um, thing. The fact that nicknames exist in the game and they are called nicknames as like an actual mechanic of the game—it's a really cool thing. Uh, something I 
started to use when I was using, when I was creating more, uh, when I was trying to update Curse on the homebrew. Nickname, I think, is actually a really cool thing. So, here we go. The nickname first for everybody. Um, let's go Lightning. She got a 10. Uh, shining. It's plus one permanent accuracy. Okay, so she's back to zero accuracy now. So shining, shining, uh, four, shining sneak, um, one more, nine, shining sneak, lightning of the antelope, shining sneak of the antelope, I guess. Okay, uh, sh shining sneak of the antelope. That's lightning. Lee. Three. So Lee, what are you? Dingle. No, yes, Dingle. Dingle. Oh, hero. Permanent strength for Lee. So she goes up to two. Uh, Dingle Hero. <laughs> Four. Of the Lantern. Dingle Hero of the Lantern. Okay. Uh, Yisa. Six. Okay, Brainless. I should just write down the, I think I should just write down the ones that do something. To speed this up. Eight does nothing. Six does nothing. So Yisa is also known as the brainless savior of the lion. Whatever. So, unless they do something, I'm not writing it down. There's nothing I don't think that recalls anybody with a nickname in the game. Uh, now time for Tyson. Four. Tyson is Dingle. Savior. Of the Lantern. Good. Okay. Whatever. Speed that up. <laughs> uh, two people got stuff. Okay. So. Now, story events. So first off, we have, put that over there, this and this over here, out of the way, out of the way, Bone Witch, Bone Witch, Bold, Bone Witch. Okay. One day the exiled or one day the exile emerged from the darkness. The settlement worried at the sound of her wailing chants. Everyone feared that mystery kept her alive. Everyone feared what mystery kept her alive in the darkness all these years. Some could not resist asking. All non-deaf returning survivors gain plus three insanity. The most insane. So um, let's give everybody plus three insanity. And then let's figure out, I think the most insane is actually Yisa. So everybody gains plus three. So <laughs> Tyson's at eight, which is good. He's immortal, right? Yeah. And quick side. Tyson's eight. Yisa's nine. Uh, Lee will be at four. Lightning will be at five. Uh-oh. Everybody is going to be insane. That whole now the whole hunting party is insane. Not good. Okay. Um, the most insane, which is Yisa. Okay. Yisa uh, is drawn to the Bone Witch and must endeavor at witch camp. 
think I still have to spend the Endeavor. So, okay. So Yisa must Endeavor. So there, she's spending her one Endeavor at Bone Witch. Um, I don't know if you actually have to spend it. I think you do. It says they must actually Endeavor. So, okay. Uh, Witch Camp. Uh, the Bone Witch. Oh, no. Here we go. So this is just a roll. Here we go. Witch Camp. Let's go. Okay. So that's not good. That's a one. Let's see what happens. The Bone Witch never forgave her exile. Her burning hatred lit the dark brighter that, brighter than any lantern. With jagged teeth and gnarled claws, she attacks. You manage to escape, but the wounds she inflict continue to burn. The group may spend three endeavors to save you. Otherwise, you die miserably wailing death. Okay, uh, we don't want that, so it looks like Lee is burning her reroll. So Lee, since she has infinite lives, she's going to take one of her rerolls and burn that first. So, okay, Yisa, don't die this time. Uh, hopefully that's not death, right? Secrets of the Dark should not be seen. The last thing you see are the Bone Witch's outstretched claws reaching for your eyes. Your eyes are scarred. Roll 1d5 for minus permanent accuracy. Okay, so we're gonna burn someone else's. Reroll, I guess. Whose reroll are we gonna burn on this? Uh, Arwen, I think. No, not Arwen. Who's uh, the one that can't do anything? Tiara. Tiara's re-roll is burned. Okay. Tiara's re-roll is burned. <laughs> Let's not roll a one, two, or three, or four. Eight. Bone Witch whispers of the horrors and wonders, wait, yeah, the Bone Witch whispers of the horrors and wonders she has seen, arming you with valuable wisdom, gain plus two insanity, plus one understanding, and the Bone Whisperer's secret fighting art. Okay, I don't have the Bone Whisperer's secret fighting art, but, so, okay, so Tiara's thing is burned. This is Yisa, right? Where did I put Yisa? Okay, Yisa. Uh, two insanity. She's at 11. That's quite insane. <laughs> One understanding. So that's going to trigger white speaker. Right? The white secret. No, no, no. Insight. What am I doing? What am I thinking? Because I need bone whisper. And that's, why I, that's why I had whisper. So I need to get Bone Whisperer, and I need to trigger White or uh, Insight. Okay, let's just roll for Insight during this. Well, what is Insight during the settlement phase? So Tinker. So, so she's a Tinker. Tinker. And uh, yeah, a nine. She gains plus one permanent accuracy. Okay. So let me get Bone Whisperer to see your fighting art real quick. Bone Whisperer. When another survivor dies on the showdown board, place a token where they died. If you pass over it, remove the token and eat their skull. Heal your survivor and roll 1d10 plus your hunt experience. Okay. So it just does stuff when someone dies. I didn't really need to go get it. I don't... I just remembered that now. <laughs> no, that's TR. Okay. So there it is. The Bone Whisperer. Um, where did I put Yisa? Here she is. Bone Whisperer. Okay, we're still not done. <laughs> so there's Bone Whisperer. That's the end of Bone Witch. Okay. Now, 
we still have uh, whatever this one is called. What's this called? Sunstalker's thing. Promise Under the Sun. Okay. So, Promise Under the Sun. There was once a boy and a girl who met under the blanket of darkness and counted the lights in the sky together. When their lips touched the sun, when, the, when their lips touched, the sun dawned for the first time. I have a crazy dream to share with you, said the girl. We will hunt down that light and live under it, together forever. I swear we'll do this, uh, sir, I swear to you, we'll live that dream together, said the boy. He felt the promise swell in his heart. The girl and boy grew into a man and woman. Together they cooked many meals, repaired weapons, fought monsters, and gave up on and gave up on starting a family. Although their childhood promise was forgotten with the passage of time, they shared a great love. But one day, the woman fell ill. As they lay, counting the lights in the sky like they always had, the sun finally dawned again. Excitedly, the man turned to the woman, but she had stopped counting some time ago. Beneath the warmth of the sun, he kissed her cold body goodbye and remembered their promise. He decided that he would hunt the sun so that he may bury it with her. Nominated survivor... They gain the burning ambition fighting art. Okay? So, someone just gets burning ambition. So, burning ambition just means you can't... I have it right here. Uh, so, when, you just, when you're told to skip the next hunt, you just don't. So, uh, we're going to give that to... Who was I going to give that to? Lightning can already do that. Where's, who has Fist and Tooth? Oh, yeah. Fist and Tooth is... Uh, Alice. So Alice is going to get Burning Ambition. This is the person's rerolls use. Burning Ambition. Because I didn't like the fact she had to skip that one hunt when I was trying to do Fist and Tooth. So now that's not going to be a problem. Okay. With that said, we now also add these fighting arts to the fighting art deck, which I'll do right now. Whew, lots of story events. Now we can finally move on. Okay, there. Fighting Arts in the Fighting Art deck. Disorders in the Disorder deck. Okay. Done with that. So, we finally now mark year eight. All right, so we have one more hunt of the antelope. Hopefully we can get two pelt and finish it. So, first things first, spending an endeavor here. Gonna do innovate because we finally have symposium. So spending the three things here, three monster resources, innovations, uh, is this the innovation? This is my innovation deck. All right, here we go. Finally doing this. <laughs> Come on. Now we get to draw four. So we're just going to get paint. Um, if it comes up, it's paint. That's what we're getting. Other than that, we'll see. Family. Paint. So there's paint. I don't think there's any reason I would take anything else. Yeah, so paint. Uh, well, the other ones were Centrus, Cooking, and f Family. I mean, Family's good, but it's not paint. So, paint. <laughs> can finally dash. So, there, we can dash now. Uh, I'll add the paint consequences. So, finally have paint. Let's quickly add paint consequences. So we got sculpture, pictograph, face painting. Good. So three more get added, but as long as we have symposium, it's not that big of a deal. Those get added to the deck. Um, all right, that's that. So we have two large flat tooth, spiral horn, and a broken lantern. So, <laughs> we're just going to make um, the Screaming Coat, so we're doing that, Screaming Coat, 
And then, it's because that's a pelt and a bone. Yeah, pelt and a bone make the screaming coat. So regular monster bone, pelt. So we've made the screaming coat. And then we also have muscly gum, but I can just say there for now. And then on top of that, here we go. So let's make some new stuff. So, first things first. Now that we have paint, because I really needed paint, I had this set all aside just in case I had got it, because I knew that was the only thing I was going to take. So, with paint, we can make this. So this requires one cloth and one organ and paint. Once we do that, we can make uh, a tabard. So this is amazing, this accessory. So we can wear this because we gain plus one ins insanity. Well, we don't gain anything because we don't have a principle yet. <laughs> but we will. Either way, this thing is awesome. So I'll spend, what is it, a cloth and an organ? So I'll spend the bladder here and the cloth. Um, starting, this cloth is just the starting gear. It's this that you just start with. Okay, so that gives us that. Next, we want um, this, because we do have lantern oven still, right? I didn't lose it during Hands of Heat. Yep, we still have a lantern oven. Um, next thing we need is a leather and two bone, and then a lantern other, or heat. So that would be how we're going to do that. Someone's going to spend their endeavor. They're going to do ammonia, or do leather making with ammonia at the leather worker to turn this crab spider, since it is a hide, into a leather. So there goes the crab spider, and then we'll spend the two shank bone to make this, uh, the hard breastplate, which is an outfit, and you ignore the first severe injury you suffer during the showdown. This is also a chess piece. So, the reason why we're making that stuff, along with once we finish the Screaming Antelope set, hopefully next time uh, we'll start making leather, will be to go towards uh, the Vagabond armor set. So, with the Vagabond armor set here, you can see on the back here, so you need you would need the tabard. You just have to have it, and then you can substitute either of these things. So we made the hardened breastplate to substitute for the leather uh, chest piece. So then we'll have to make a leather skirt. We'll have to make the leather bracers, and then we can decide whether or not we make the leather boots or make the other um, leggings. I forget what they're called. But so with the vagabond armor, it's really good. But you can't wear a helmet with it. You can never wear a helmet, but it gives... Uh, whoever's wearing it will automatically have shield specialization and shield mastery. It doesn't give it to the settlement, but it allows them to have it. And it doesn't give them the actual levels in the sword stuff. It just gives them the proficiency and the mastery. So that's why I still... So even though Yisa... She's, I mean, Yisa's going to make it to sword mastery, assuming, because I'm just going to keep taking her hoping to get Excalibur, so then hopefully I can get that strain unlocked. So we're just going to continue doing that stuff. But with the Vagabond armor, since Yisa can't fight forever, and if I do get Excalibur, or say I get Black Sword, because that's still the goal, I want to get a Black Sword, then Vagabond armor will give someone else the Sword Mastery and the uh, Sword Proficiency. Because sword, we have Yisa has Sword Proficiency now, she just couldn't use it last time. Um... Well, I'll, when we go out and fight, I'll show the actual sword mastery. So I think we're done now. Uh, I don't think there's really anything. I can't really use this. The only other thing I could make would be um, if I if I wanted. To, oh no, I don't have uh, forbidden dance. That's right. I was thinking if I, if I didn't get paint, I figured I would I would get forbidden dance. That's why I had all these down here. With the muscly gum, um, I would have spent all four of these monster resources just to cash them in, to try to get basic resources, to try to get hide and try to make more leather. Or, um, but I didn't get that, so we still need forbidden dance. But paint was what much more important. Paint was the thing I needed to get for sure. So, I'm trying to think, what else could we do with this last thing? I think I'm just going to spend this to give. Uh, so yeah, I'll just spend this endeavor. 
to give, what is it, uh, drums, where's drums? Yeah, so I'll just spend the Endeavor to give, what well, doesn't matter, drums, you spend an Endeavor, you can get Rhythm Chaser or Synchronized Strike, so I'll just give Rhythm Chaser to Lee, and that will give back her, um, her reroll that we had to use for Yisa. So Lee, where is Lee? Lee, here we go. Uh, there, she's now got her now got it back. I think there's some stupid thing with this. I need to rename her, correct or something. Fent lives here it is. Uh, you cannot gain new fighting arts of disorders when you would gain one instead of gaining new lifetime. Give yourself a new name and a once per lifetime reroll. Gain plus one survival. Okay. So, she gains plus one survival, which is whatever, but, um, she gets her infinite reroll back, so she's at four survival now. And, yeah, she has to gain a new name, but I'm not going to do that, because, again, I took name suggestions from the comments, so we're just going to leave it as Lee. We'll just assume that she stays Lee, and then it just keeps adding E's, so either way, it would still be pronounced as Lee, but I'm not going to keep adding Lee's. I'm just marking a little little dot next to infinite lives and I'll erase the dot when I have or don't have the reroll. So the dot means I have it. So that's it. Kind of sucked endeavor wise because I had to spend one endeavor to do whatever so I can't really try for intimacy. I can't believe my lack of love juice drawing but it is what it is I guess. So one more screaming antelope hopefully Hopefully that's it. All I need is two more pelt to make the bracers and to make the skirt. Yeah, two more pelt. Make braces and a skirt and one hide as in addition to that. So, thank you so much for watching. So very humbling. And I'll see you in the final Screaming Antelope hunt that I hope is real thing. <laughs>